In this video, we're going to look at the current state of visual scripting in Unity. Visual scripting is an excellent learning tool and it opens up Unity to a lot more people. Being dots based means you get epic performance by default and it also works as a way for programmers to understand the dots and ECS paradigm. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here we're going to look into how to start using visual scripting and make a simple player character move left and right. So first of all, I'm mainly a programmer because I love to code. I've been writing code for decades and it's definitely something that I love to do. But I see a lot of comments from people saying they are scared to learn code because it all looks way too complex. Programming is mainly about logic and thinking about flow, and that's exactly what visual scripting helps in visualizing. If you understand all the logic behind your visual scripts, then all you need to do after that is learn the programming syntax, and all of a sudden you know how to code. So I'm a huge fan of visual scripting as a great learning tool for helping people get started and being less scared of programming. Okay, so here we're going to check out the Unity visual scripting package. This is still very much in development at the time of recording, it is currently on the 6th experimental drop running on Unity 2019.3. So if you're watching this many months in the future, then some things likely have changed. There's normally a new drop every 6 weeks or so. Check the link in the description to download it and try it for yourself. Now one particular thing about visual scripting is that it's fully based on Unity dots. So that means several things. First of all, it means extreme performance. Your scripts are automatically set up to benefit from burst and the job system, giving you excellent performance. Another thing, and this is very interesting, is it also means that visual scripting works as an excellent tool for understanding how Unity Dots works. So even if you're a complete programmer and not interested in visual scripting for production code, you can still use it to understand the core concepts behind Dots. If you're not familiar with Dots or Unity ECS, then I will cover it here, but for a more detailed explanation, check the links in the description. DOTS stands for the Data Oriented Technology Stack, which is comprised of the ECS, or Entity Component System, the Job System, and Burst. So ECS stands for the Entity Component System, and this is a data oriented programming paradigm. You have components, which hold data, then you have entities, which hold instances of components, and finally you have systems, which run logic on entities and components. Again, for a more detailed explanation, check the links in the description. Here, after you see the example, it'll all become easier to understand. So over here, I have a completely empty Unity project and I have installed the visual scripting package. Now I can go all the way up here into window and open up the visual script window. And here it is, this is the window that pops up. Right now it's completely empty. So let's create a visual script. For that, we go down here onto our project files and we create, and all the way down here, we have visual script. And then let's make a ECS graph. Let's call it something like player movement. Okay, so here is the window with the player movement script. As you can see, we have an entity query and a on update running through every entity that matches that query. Now let's create our player entity. So to do that, it's very simple to what you're already used to. Over here on the hierarchy, let's create a 3D object. Let's make it a quad. Okay, so here in the scene, you can see a very basic quad. Right now, the current dots implementation doesn't support the sprite renderers, so that's why we're using a mesh filter and a mesh render. All right, so here we have a basic player sprite. Now, in order to convert this from a game object into an entity, we need to go in here, add the component of type convert to entity. So there you go, this one converts a game object into an entity and then destroys the game object. So now if we try running our game, okay, the game is running and now we can go into window in order to open up the entity debugger. And there you go, you can see that the entity debugger has our player character with all those components. And if we pause, you can see that the hierarchy is empty. All right, so our character is now working as an entity. Great. Now that we have this working, let's add some logic onto it. So here is our visual script window, and we can simply drag the player onto it. And as soon as you do, you can see that it automatically added a player query. And in order to view information about this player query, we go all the way up here onto this button, which shows the blackboard, so click on it. And there you go, we have our blackboard. So here on the blackboard, we can see our various queries, variables, and the current scope. So for example, we can expand this one. And over here, you can see all of the components that were automatically added to this query by dragging our player character onto it. So the player character has render bounds, local to world, non-uniform scale, rotation, and so on. 
So now we can get rid of this one previous, get rid of that query, okay? And now we have our player query, so we can drag it by clicking in here, drag it to the side, and now we choose an action, so let's choose the on update entities. And now here to keep things simple, let's make sure that we only care about the translation components. So get rid of all of these, since we're not going to modify them. All right, so here we have a very simple query. So whatever actions that we put in here will run on every single entity that contains a translation component, which in this case, all we have is our player. So now here we can do something. So select this, press space, and let's add the translate. So this node allows us to translate an entity, so move it around. So in here, instead of using a complete follow three, which is essentially the same as a vector three, we're going to put by axes, and now we can modify them individually. So here we can move our entity, so let's simply put a certain value on the x, so let's say 0.1. And now here, if we do it like this, it will translate onto x equals 0.1, but we want to add it on every frame, so we simply select add. So this will translate by an x of 0.1 on every single update. And that will happen for every single entity that matches this query, which is simply the translation component. So every entity that contains a translation is going to execute this action, which will move it to the right. Let's see. Okay, here we are, and yep, there's our player character constantly moving to the right. Awesome. So just like this, you can already see how this tool works and how it's useful for both non-programmers to make games, as well as for programmers to learn about the entity component system. And also one thing is over here we have another button. This one is for the code viewer. So if you click on it, there you go, it shows up the code viewer window. And in here you can see the code representation of what we're doing with our visual script. So here in the code, you can see that we have our component system, which is our visual script. We have an entity query called player query, exactly this one. On the system create, we are creating our entity query, which as you can see, only has the translation component. And then on every update, which is this stack, we are cycling through every entity that matches that player query. So for each of those entities, we're going to grab the translation component. And then in here, we're going to modify the translation value x and increase it by 0.1, which is exactly what we're doing in here. So this is how this tool can be excellent for programmers. You can make a certain visual script and then look at the actual code that's running behind it. Okay, so now let's make some more logic. Now over here, we are moving to the right and let's make it move to the right until it reaches a certain point and then moves left. So over here on our update entity stack, we can add another node. Let's add a simple if condition. So here, as you can see, we have an if, which takes a condition. If condition is true, then it will run this stack. And if condition is false, it will run this stack. So now, since we want to move it to the right and then to the left, we want the condition to be when it goes past a certain point. So we want to test the X position and see if it's larger than a certain amount. So first we grab the translation component. So there it is. So we stretch this out. Then we select the get property node. Then select the get property, press space in order to select whatever properties we want to get. And in this case, we want to get the X, so select that one. And yep, there you go. Now we have this node in here, which will return the X value inside of the translation component. Now we need a condition to input into our if here. So let's get the condition greater than. So this will output true if A is greater than B. So we pass in A in there. And now on B, we select a certain value. So over here in the editor, we can see, let's say that our sprite starts in here and we want to move it back when it reaches this point. So this point is at seven. So over here, this will return true if A is past seven. And then we put in this condition in there. All right, so in here we have our update, which first moves our entity. Then we test if the translation X is past seven. If so, then we're going to go into this stack. And in this stack, let's just add a debug log for testing. So over here, we can add a simple log and now for the message, let's simply put out the value.x. Okay, so here we have a very simple script. We're going to move our player to the right. Once it goes past seven, we should be able to see a log on the console. Let's see. Okay, here we are with our console empty and now our sprite is moving to the right. And once he goes past seven and yep, there you go. We have our condition triggering and now we have our log. Awesome. So just like this, we already have a very simple script here working with some nice logic. And again, the whole thing is done without having to write any code whatsoever but we can also inspect the code viewer in order to see what's actually happening. So over here, we are increasing the translation value on the X. Then we do an if that value.x is bigger than seven. If so, then we do a debug.log on the translation value.x. So now that we have this working and we are identifying when the player goes past to the right, when that happens, let's make a move to the left. 
So for that in here, let's make a new component. So we go into create down here onto visual script. And over here we have a bunch of options and let's select a new component. Let's make this our move direction. So when we create a component, we see this window. As you can see, it's named move direction, it's of type component. And over here we can add all the fields inside of this component. So let's add a new field. Let's call this our value and instead of an integer, let's make it a float. All right, so we have a component with one field of type float. So now we select the player and we simply drag the move direction straight onto our player. All right, so over here we can see our value. Now this is the direction, so we're only going to put either one or minus one. So let's start with one, so it starts going to the right. Okay, so back in our visual script, over here we have our player query, currently running on all entities with translation, and let's also add another required component. And in this case, it will be our move direction component. And there you go, over here you can already see it added the translation and the move direction. So here let's first use our move direction when we translate something. So let's drag the move direction there, and we push it out, and we use a get property. On the get property, let's select our value, and now we multiply the value by a certain speed, which is what we're doing in here. So we have our move direction, either one or minus one, so going left or right. And then we have our movement speed, and we simply add a multiply node. We multiply our direction by our speed, and that's what we pass into our translation component. All right, so we're doing exactly the same thing as previously. Here we are, and yep, there's the player still moving to the right. Okay, so far so good. Now back into our if down here. So we're doing an if the translation value x goes past seven. If that happens, then we're going to run this stack. And in here, instead of doing a log, what we're going to have is a set property. So this is how we modify something. So the something we want to modify is on the move direction component. So we drag it in here. We connect that one into that one. Now we select set property, press space, and over here we can modify the value. So when translation goes past seven, let's simply set the value to minus one. Okay, so just like this, as soon as the player reaches the right side, it should start moving to the left side. Okay, here we are, and there's the player, and he's going to move, and he moves as soon as he gets there. Yep, there you go, he modified the move direction component, and now he's moving to the left. And we can pause and look at the entity debugger, and over here we have our player entity, and here is the inspector, and we can see indeed the move direction has a value of minus one. All right, awesome. So here we have the player going to the right and then left. Now let's make him go back to the right once he reaches the edge on the left. So all we do is very simple. We have our if we go past the right side, then we set the move direction. If not, then let's drag it to make another stack. On this stack, let's set an if. So again, we're going to need our condition like we did previously. So we can simply select these. Control C, Control V, there you go. And now in here, instead of a greater than, we want a less than node. So over here, if the translation value x, if it is under minus seven, then this will be true. So if that happens, then we want to do the same thing in here. So we want to do a set property and we're going to set the move direction, select the value and we set the value to one. All right, so over here we have a very simple script working, moving our player right and left. Let's see it in action. Okay, here we are and there's the player going to the right. As soon as he reaches the edge, yep, there you go. He starts going left. So the move there component now has minus one now he reaches the left side, and there you go, now the move there component is back to one, so he's back to going to the right. So here we have some nice simple logic working. Awesome. And again, here we can inspect this entity, there's the move direction currently at minus one, so he's going to the left. And you can see down here the translation component, there's the x currently going to the left. As soon as it reaches minus seven, it will modify the move direction component from minus one, and... Yep, there you go, it modified to one, and now he's going to the right. All right, now let's add a few more things. First of all, let's make a speed component. So over here we create, go down here, visual script, new component. Let's call it type move speed. In here we make it move speed and we add the field, call it our value. And again, this one is a float and hit save. There you go, there's our move speed proxy component. So we select the player, we drag the move speed component on there. And now we're going to multiply it by delta time. So let's put, let's say 10. Back in our visual script, let's open up our query, add another required component. This one of type move speed. And there it is, there's our move speed component. And in here, instead of using this constant we were using previously, we're going to use our move speed. So we drag the component on there. We push it out. We add a get property node. Then we hit space in order to grab the value. So we grab the value and multiply it by there. 
So here we have the speed multiplied by the direction. And now after doing this, let's get a delta time node. This is in order for our code to be frame rate independent. So we get that and we simply multiply it. So we add a multiply node between our delta time and our speed result. Then we take this and we add it on the X. All right, so here you can actually see our logic very visually. We're multiplying the direction by the speed, then we're multiplying that result by the delta time to make it frame rate independent, and we're simply passing that into the translate by node on the X value. And this node is set to add, so it will constantly add the value that it receives in here. Then we have our simple if testing if the X goes past seven. If so, then we're going to run this stack, and this stack will set the move direction up here back to minus one. So it will move to the left side. And if it is not past the left side, then we go into this stack and this stack we do an if. If it is under minus seven, then we set the move direction back into one. So he goes back into the right. All right, so here's our very nice script. Let's see it in action. And yep, there's our player moving with a specific movement speed. So we could modify the value inside of that component and it would modify how fast the player is moving. And again, the whole thing is frame rate independent. So you can see we're running at 800 frames per second and with a speed of 10. So everything is working great. So over here we have our logic completely working and we made all of this happen without writing a single line of code. Again, you can see how this is a great way for beginners to get started with the logic of programming without having to actually write code. And thanks to the code viewer, this is also excellent for programmers in order to understand how the entity component system works. So as you can see, we are grabbing our entity query we're grabbing everything with the translation, move direction, and move speed components. Then we do an entities for each with this player query. We're increasing it on the X, and over here you can see our multiplication. So we multiply the move direction value by the move speed value. And then we're multiplying this whole thing by our delta time, and we're applying it to the translation value.x. Then we're doing a simple if past 7f. If so, then we set the move direction to minus one. And if not, then we test if the value X is under minus seven. And if so, we set the move direction value to one. So again, here we have our nice sprite going left and right with some simple logic. And over here is the entire visual script running that action. If you want to see more visual scripting content, please let me know in the comments. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from untcodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.